wrote this book, Michelangelo's Medicine, because I want to see a change in healthcare, and I thought this was the best way to do it. Okay, I wanted to get some new ideas out there, some fresh thinking that I don't see enough in medical schools, in residency programs, and in our clinical practice. And one of the reasons I want to do that is because there's so much suffering that I see in healthcare that is unnecessary. Okay, it's one thing if pain is necessary and suffering is necessary, and sometimes it's inevitable. We all get injured, we all get hurt. To some extent, it's part of life. But when it comes in a way that's unnecessary, when it occurs to an extent that's unnecessary, then we need to really examine what's happening and take a deeper look. Okay, so one of the things I write about in this book is what I call the informational problem. Okay, what is the informational problem? Well, in medicine and in healthcare, we talk a lot about operational problems. Okay, very important issues like getting access to health care, the cost of health care, getting enough coverage, health insurance coverage, right? safety, decreasing errors. These are all extremely important. And yet, the most important issue in health care that I see now is actually an informational issue, not an operational issue. So what is the informational problem? The informational problem says that medical science's understanding of the human being is remarkably incomplete. Okay? Just let that sink in for a second. Our understanding of the human being is remarkably incomplete. So, in other words, we can fix health insurance coverage, we can fix access, we can fix cost, even if we fix all those things. Right? Let's say we had the magic wand, we could wave it and fix all those things. Even if we did that, we still would be delivering care that's suboptimal because our understanding of the human body is incomplete. And that is the informational problem, and it shows up in every aspect of healthcare. In fact, I would say that that accounts for more suffering than almost anything else. And that suffering happens not only with patients, but with clinicians too, but with the people who are actually delivering the care. Okay? Because what is the essence of this, the essence of the informational problem? Well, here it is. What we have done is define the human being as a physical structure. Okay? We've defined the human being as a physical structure. And yet, we know, we've known for over a hundred years in science, that when we get down to the smallest levels, what we describe as physical, molecules, atoms, and so forth, it, they disappear they disappear into fields and waves. And these are not substantial, hard things that we can touch and feel like our bodies. Now, of course our bodies are physical in one sense, right? I can, I can touch my hands, right? I can pull my cheeks. I can see the physical structure. Of course, we have these experiences of the body as a physical thing. There's no doubt about that. But we also have such a rich experience of our own thoughts. Right? We also have a rich experience of our feelings. We also have rich, vivid experiences when we have dreams, when our imagination runs wild, when we are creative. In other words, our experience of ourselves as human beings is not as physical things. It is more as experiences, rich, varying experiences. And just a part of that is this hard, physical shell that we have. And so, when we go down, when we zoom in to this hand, right? When we zoom into this, what do we see? First, we see skin. We go in, we can see muscles, bones. We'll see blood vessels. We'll see nerves. And we'll see blood. And when we zoom in further, we get to the level of molecules. And when we zoom in further than that, atoms and then particles. And if you go beyond that level, all of a sudden, we disappear into the world of probability, into the world of waves, into the world of fields, space, and so on. In other words, science doesn't yet know how to understand, doesn't yet know how to interpret these two worlds, this non-physical world, which is invariably at the foundation of what we are, of what the physical structure is, not just our bodies, but the entire world around us. 
and we don't know how to reconcile that. How can waves and fields and space give rise to apparent solidity, apparent hard physical stuff? Well, the truth is, we do this every day. When we have a dream at night, we live in a very solid physical world in that dream, right? Our bodies are hard. We can touch them. We can feel them. And we're sure that it's very physical and real. And yet when we wake up and we look back, we know for sure, oh, of course it wasn't real. Of course it wasn't solid. It was simply an experience of physicality. It was an experience of solidness, right? And now think back to the dream body that you had last night. Was that body made of atoms? Was that body made of space or fields? No, right? None of that was actually there. It was an experience. It was a mental experience made of mind stuff, stuff that's thinner than air, right? So that understanding of the human being, that scientific understanding, it doesn't have to be philosophical. It doesn't have to be spiritual. It's a scientific understanding that we already know, but we haven't yet brought that into medical science. So we're still looking at the human being in front of us. And that means both the patient and that means us as clinicians in the mirror. We're still looking at ourselves and our patients and everyone else as physical things, at least from the perspective of our training. Even though we're told to build rapport, even though we're told and we intrinsically, we know within ourselves that these are human beings. Of course we know that, but our training limits us because the science and the training we have does not yet understand the human being as something more than a physical thing that can be reduced to a series of measurements. So how do we go beyond the informational problem? How do we solve the informational problem? The first step is diagnosing it, okay? And that's a big part of this book is making the diagnosis. We all know that if you don't get the diagnosis right, you're not gonna get the treatment right. So the diagnosis is the informational problem. Our understanding of the human being is remarkably incomplete. What is the treatment? What are the steps we have to take to understand ourselves as something more, to actually see that, not just, not only as intuition, but also as a conceptual framework that we can build our training on, that we can build our science on, so we can deliver outstanding care to our patients and ourselves. Because ultimately, there's no dichotomy between ourselves and our patients. When one does well, the other does well. It's a cohesive, integrated unit. Okay? So that's one of the things, one of the storylines in this book, Michelangelo's Medicine. Please do check it out. You can get it on Amazon. You can look for my name, Anup Kumar, or Michelangelo's Medicine. If you do type in Michelangelo, the, the Michael part doesn't have an A. So it's M-I-C-H-E-L, Michelangelo's Medicine. Okay? Or you can go to my website, anupkumar.com, and there's a link right there. All right, so please share this video. Let's change healthcare for the better. Let's reduce unnecessary suffering in healthcare for patients, for clinicians, for everyone. And then let's also bring this understanding into our daily lives outside of healthcare because ultimately well being and healing and experiencing the fullness of our lives is not something that's restricted to healthcare. Okay, it happens to be a field that I'm in, in emergency medicine, where I see emergencies day in and day out. And what I see is that the true emergency, the informational problem, has not yet been diagnosed. So let's diagnose it together. Let's treat it together. And en route, let's experience healing and well-being. Please share this video. And if you have questions, the, the book is chock full of ideas, of frameworks, and of meditations so that you can experience this. And there will be no shortage of questions, I'm sure. So please ask questions. You can post them below as comments, and we'll address them next time. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.